Chairman. Uh, thank the gentlelady for yielding back, and the chair now recognizes the chair of the full committee, Chair McMorris Rogers, for five minutes for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all my colleagues who are leading on bills today. Together, we are taking action to address the illicit fentanyl crisis, protect the 988 suicide and crisis lifeline, and stop discrimination against people with disabilities. More people than ever are dying from fentanyl poisonings. As many parents have appealed to us, this requires urgent action. Moms like Molly Kane deserve justice. We must secure the border and do everything in our power to make sure law enforcement has the tools that they need to seize fentanyl and fentanyl-related substances. That's why we're advancing Representative Griffith and Lattice Halt Fentanyl Act and Representative Lesko and Miller Meeks bill, the Securing the Border for Public Health Act. The Halt Fentanyl Act would permanently place fentanyl-related substances into Schedule I of the Controlled Substances Act and make sure law enforcement can keep these weapons-grade poisons off our streets. DEA testified just last month that permanently scheduling fentanyl-related substances in Schedule I is their number one legislative priority. And in our field hearing in McAllen, we all heard and saw why. The Securing the Border for Public Health Act would expand current Title 42 authority to be used to stop the import of certain controlled substances, including fentanyl and fentanyl-related substances. I want to be very clear. The Biden administration cannot let the emergency scheduling order expire, and it should not lift Title 42. If the administration continues its open border agenda, Mexican cartels, like the one that just kidnapped four Americans and killed two of them, will be even more emboldened. I urge us to come together to save lives, halt fentanyl, stop the criminals pushing these poisons, and secure our border. I also want to recognize Rep Harshberger's uh, Block Report and Suspend Suspicious Shipments Act. The opioid epidemic was fueled in part by suspiciously large shipments of controlled substances being delivered across the country, especially in the Appalachian region. This bill would stop, would help stop this practice and save lives by requiring drug manufacturers and distributors that dis discover a suspicious order for controlled substances to halt the order and report that information to DEA. Additionally, the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline suffered a cyber attack and was shut down for several hours late last year. This lifeline is a critical tool that, that provides support and hope to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress. We don't yet know the magnitude of the individuals impacted by the outage but we must make sure it doesn't happen again. Thank you, Rep. Obernolte, for your work on the 988 Lifeline Cybersecurity Responsibility Act. It requires coordination and reporting to improve cybersecurity protections for the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. <laughs> Lastly, <laughs> regarding my legislation to ban the use of Quality Adjusted Life Years, or QALIs, and other similar, similar measures by state and federal government healthcare programs, more than 70 disability and patient organizations agree that qualities are, are di discriminatory and have no place in our <coughs> decision making. Imagine having to beg the government for a drug for your son with a progressive disease. Imagine being told by the government his life isn't worth the cost of his medication. Or being told that your child with Down syndrome has a life less worthy of saving and therefore, the government won't cover the cost of an organ transplant. The federal government can evaluate the effectiveness of treatments and cures without devaluing the lives of seniors and people with disabilities. I'll have an amendment to reflect feedback from HHS and other stakeholders to ensure that this legislation achieves its goal, and I hope that it will be recommended with broad support to the full committee. At the center of all these bills today, the Energy and Commerce Committee is leading to affirm that every life is worth living. For those in despair, we are offering hope for a brighter and more secure future for all. And it is critical that we continue to make progress on these bills in today's subcommittee. I look forward to our discussion and the work to come for the People's House to take action on these solutions. Thank you, and I yield back. 